chosen ones. Listen up. You really can't see what you're in when you're in it. The second you depart away from the narc, like I said in the other video, even just as soon as that door closed behind you, you'll realize that that person just is idle. They got nothing but time on their hands. If y'all ever watch Dragon Ball Z, I think this animal, I mean, this character was called Ditto. I think that was the name of the character. I think the name was Ditto. Where, what's up, bro? Chilling, bro. This character will just like um, literally try to be like you. And that's really what that is. You know, when you get up, you leave the house. They get up and they want to leave the house. Seems like as soon as you go get it, go back in the house. Here they come. Coming through the door, right? Let me know down in the comments below if that's how y'all narcissist is. You know, they could be anywhere. It's like they, you know, and in therapy, there's this term called the magnet, the human magnet. I forgot the last word. And I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if there's something out here called that, bro, because there's so much stuff going on in this world, bro. You sitting here thinking you going through a natural abusive situation and you realize that it's an experiment that, you know, I ain't gonna say that went wrong because your enemies might wish for you to be stuck in something like that, right? Chosen ones, these people act like they're gonna die if you don't, if they, if you walk out of their life. The narcissist behaves this way. They're staging arguments <clears throat> and they're really, really good at it. And it's, it's really insidious. It's really disgusting to me. It's really degrading and it makes me look bad to other women, like women of fr family, friends and stuff like that. Cause they're really trying to flash a flashlight on you and get you to look like, uh, you're the imbecile, you know, like you're the, you're the problem in, in everything in, in their life and in your life and in just in life in general. And the thing that's funny is like, there is no problem. I said this in a post yesterday. I was like, the chosen ones have no real problems. Like, But as I just left the house, the narc was talking to somebody else who, you know, we live, it's three of us in there, somebody else you talking to and throwing the same type of rhetoric up in this person's face that they was just trying to throw up in my face like literally before the other person came in the door and it's like these people really got no life they really have no problem going from next person to next person with that same energy you know what I mean trying to get that next person in that same uh type energy like with no like no they got no shame in their game like they have no problem like shifting that energy or that spider web onto the next that nest narcissistic spider web onto the next person and just me even hearing that as i walk walk by and as i left even me just hearing that, I'm like, this person got no shame in their game. The narcissist has no shame in their game. And like I said, they know when you're building yourself up. And they're, they're going to attack whatever it is in your life. Whether it's a new girlfriend, whether it's a new vehicle, whether it's a new job. 
they're gonna go on the hunt to try to you you militize you and bring you back down like i said by attacking that one thing whatever that one thing or two things are three things they're gonna attack it in a way where you feel back to square one and when you don't let them bring you back to square one they're gonna realize you know when they bring up whatever that thing is that's helping you to not be as edible as you were before they're gonna bring it up to you chosen ones they're gonna say do you want to take this back to the store or, um do you what you thinking do you um they're gonna ask you stuff about the relationship that you you know the people who um you form the relationships with because they're ultimately trying to get you to waver on things that could change your life it's sickening it's sickening it's sad but look i don't think a lot of people on youtube talk about that part of the game how they just dwell i mean it's kind of obvious but it's not obvious to me like when i was in it they've been doing this but i just never really i was never a materialistic or even a material man like i never really cared about cars never really cared about these females none of that so i never would ask myself hmm then the narcissist kind of like was the reason why my relationships or my manliness wasn't on 100 you know because a narcissistic mother literally can helicopter the son if the son don't get his own spot if the son don't get his own house if the son don't man up or boss up or don't want more for himself that mother could really have her hooks in and you won't even see it you won't even know you're just gonna think that your breakup was regular you're gonna think that you know, because in a relationship I had when I was younger, my mom and my girlfriend was like, they were like fake close. Like they weren't even really like, that's the thing that make it worse. Like you get played at the end of the day for the type of man you wasn't because you were a kid, you feel me? At 18, 17, 16, you were a kid. But you end up taking the short end because everybody end up moving on and doing what they doing. And you still haven't never questioned, like, yo, why did that go that way? But it affected the rest of your life because anything, and unfortunately as men, we're all held more accountable. Anything you don't fix will haunt you for the rest of your life. So when the narcissist sees you're starting to turn the, the knob into the door of success, you're starting to talk and walk like you good. Like, you know, I've been through what I've been through. I'm healed, you feel me? Like, they're going to start to try to negotiate with you on, on some of the key things in your life that you should be protecting. Like your car, like I said, your car, your family. The same things that they materialistic ass would never allow you to even drive or even, you know, talk bad about their boyfriend or anything. Because they're going to compete with you on these things material things and like when it comes to the soul and the type of person you are they don't even compete with you in that and that's some stuff i don't even can, care to compete about I, I never been the type of person to be like you can ask any of the body i grew up with i never been the type of person to be like yo bro i'm better i'm the better friend because i gave you this amount of money when you needed it remember 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 but like, i've never been that type of i won't even give you the money I mean, I would if you needed it, but I wouldn't even want our friendship to go in a direction where I'm like, I mean, now that I'm older, yeah, when I was younger, it wasn't about money. But see, again, chosen one, when you stop growing, the narcissist won't tell you like, oh, well, I can see right here you need help and you should keep growing with this in your life. They're going to look and use that as, as ammunition, as weaponry to keep you stagnant. And that's all they ever wanted in their life for Christmas is to keep you stagnant. See, they just sent me a photo right now. Like the narcissist is a full fool, like a full blown fool. They're intrusive. They have no life, like I just said. 
as you walk out the house, they will do what my therapist calls induced conversation, which what that is, what that is, sending me a random photo that they just took when they was arguing with me. And they just want to keep you near them. And it's sickening. It's disgusting. Remember, it's just disgusting, bro. It's like they want to take up the space in your life that a girlfriend would and is going to. And they know if I'm sitting and occupying this space, girl's not going to like him that much. Because this is something, and y'all know I do a little dating coaching. It's something that I can clearly look at as from a, either a dating coach or a therapist side or any side and look at it all around in every angle. My mom's friends wouldn't even respect that. My sister wouldn't respect that. They're going to act like it's okay. Oh, that's your mother. You should treat your mother good. That means you're going to treat your woman good. No, it don't. Depends on what type of mother you got. Um, but again, if we're talking about narcissism, I turned out pretty good. The women I deal with in my life, chosen ones, I don't treat them bad. I'm just, I'm not perfect. But I would rather in my 24 hours focus on my women first, then my mother second. Because the mother wants, look, after 20 years old, that shouldn't be like that. But your mother's going to try to sneak in attention on you. She's going to try to sneak attention out of you that's unwarranted, just, that you're going to end up regretting. Because you're going to be like, I spent all this time just hanging around my mother. Like, I got no life. Like, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy that, you know, got friends that can hit me up to go to parties and all this stuff. Because your mother is... Literally, and, and, and like I told you, the thing that makes it even a little bit effective is that you ain't got no contact yet. I didn't go no contact yet, family. I don't got really no place to live besides, you feel me? I don't really got a, a solid place right now. So, and that's honest. A lot, of, a lot of YouTubers don't even talk like that, but it's facts, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm trying to get into a little bit of like looking at into the housing and apartments. But every time I go to the NARC to talk about it, you know that they shooting that down because that's the last thing they want. They don't even care if you go get a job sometimes, but they really don't want you to move out because they want to be able to one, watch you, stay around you, tell everybody your business, slow you down, stress you out, get paid off of you not being able to work. They just know that I gotta break a man down in order to get more money in my life. I'm keeping, I'm giving y'all so much of the real right now. And it's, and again, that's not love at all. That's sacrificial. That's, that's like, that's like demonology. That's like traitor type, snitch type. That's like killer be killed, eye for eye type energy. That's not even, that has nothing to do with mom and son. So when they throw that, I'm your mother, you can't talk to me like that, and they throw that stuff up, they're trying to get you to feel like you're four again. They're trying to gaslight you and make you feel like how you felt when you was four, five, six, and 12 years old. And if you dare to let them lead you into that, you're not growing from there. They're leading you into hell and captivity, I swear to God. That's exactly where they're leading you. They're not leading you nowhere from that point. Even if they lead you to that point and y'all are on quote unquote better terms because my therapist told me when they do that, they not, they're, they're not conversating on y'all having a better relationship. They're conversating on the idea of y'all having a better relationship. They know that you're naive and going to fall for that. If they say, oh, I'm thinking about going to therapy, I'm thinking about changing my life, I'm thinking about moving, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about, when they talk like that, it's called induced conversation, meaning I'm setting my son up to have a longer conversation with me because they hate seeing men walk out of their life. They hate seeing you get up and walk past their door every day. So they will crash out creating a, I don't know what even the word is, a vortex of statements and questions that seem invoking to get you to open up and talk about things that have nothing to do with forward progression. 
They have everything to do with evasive information and giving out information to people who are gonna, their intentions are to weaponize it, to knock you back down so you don't go nowhere. It's like the itsy bitsy spider went up the water, water sprout type deal. Like, and then the rain came and washed them down, you know, over and over. Cause, but you gotta keep going, try and try again type shit, that's real. But the truth is, is that, man, these people are, anim they're animals, bro. They're not normal, bro. Like, I mean, maybe they are normal. I'm just not used to this type of intensity because that's really the word. Because sometimes it seems like they pack everything together and do a move after a move after a move on you. Like, it's only, what, two, three o'clock? All I did was go in the house to charge my phone, bro. I didn't even sleep in the house yesterday. I came, I, I went in the house to charge my phone in, in the room that's supposedly mine. And she comes through the door and asks me the dumbest question in the world. I'm not gonna tell you the question, but just know the narcissist is gonna ask you something that they know deep down. Like I just told y'all earlier, something about a personal belonging of yours that has nothing to do with them, that's gonna help you to get away from them, you know? It could be a bus pass. It could be a girlfriend. It could be these personal things that you and you, that's, this has to do with the relationship between you and the world. It has nothing to do with you and the narcissist. The narcissist will be pervasive and ask questions to prime. It's a, it's, the questions are primed and geared towards self-destruction. Cause they don't like the way it feel for you to be able to just get up and leave and go to your girlfriend crib or to get up and leave and to just, cause now they feel a lack of power. Now I have to find another supply while the, the victim is still here. It's not like you're just moving up to, a, to college or to the army. They know they lost all the power at that point. They're just gonna move on. But when you're still, your physical presence is still nearby and they can smell it, you're still near. They're like, oh, well, we're going to double down or triple down or quadruple if we have to. And that's why you feel all that back to back to back to back attacking that they're doing. That's what I like to call it. Back to back to back to back attacking. Back to back to back to back attacking that they doing. That's literally what that, that is a lot of the time. And you get hit with a combination and that's why a lot of the chosen ones be so mad. Cause you be trying to figure out like, how do I win something where I'm getting hit with a, with a flurry of idiocy? Because it's not physical. It's not a physical fight. It's a mental, spiritual dictatorship. And, they, and they're doing it in such a way that you can't even figure out what they just did unless you got a therapist and you've been studying long like me and you know the words to put with what they just did, which was just now with that photo. Because they was arguing with me and they took a photo of me. What they just did is a couple things. I would say that falls under gaslight, meaning having you question your own reality. So a lot of the time the narc will do this. They will do something to you or ask you something. But the question is a question. They can put their two cents together and realize that this person is better off with this item they got. In what I'm trying to, the evil stuff I'm trying to do to them. They will ask you, do you want to bring this back to the store? Because they know that you see value in that item. So it's gaslighting you because it's gonna make you question your own, like, it's gonna make you question your own, um, not identity, but like, almost like, it's gonna make you question like, cause look, let me put it like, it's gonna make you question your safety and security because this person is going at, or even questioning around it's like when, it's like if you see me with this scully on and I just meet you and I'm like, yo, where'd you get that watch from, bro? Where'd you get that chain from? How much was it? You're gonna be like, why is a guy with a scully, right? Evidence that, it's not really evidence, but it's, 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 it's thought provoking, right? 
Why is he asking me about my watch? You're gonna get in your car and probably go to the next bank over just, just because of that. Same thing that the narc do. They'll ask you something around the basis of something that you see that, you know, you either A, worked hard to get, or you B, like you feel a little bit of ownership over it, but they wanna dwell on it, put their mind on it, and figure out how can I help him ruin himself by bringing that back so he could be back at square one just hanging around me. So they will do this, they will drive energy towards things that help you. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if these people help put spells on your relationships and it's the reason why you feel isolated and all this stuff. But I wouldn't be surprised, like, how can I be surprised if this person is capitalizing off the arguments? Then they'll switch it, they'll gaslight you. You think I want you here arguing with me? You think I'm, but then, okay, well, you're asking me a, 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 a rhetorical question, which is gonna keep me feeling slow, like gaslit, like I, I don't, I can't answer that. Do I think that you have thoughts about keeping me in your house? Yeah, if I'm being honest, because if you really didn't want me here, either A, you would kick me out, or B, you would allow, you would just leave me alone and say, tell me, okay, if you wanna live here, you have to get a job, and that uh, it'll end. Because people who, again, A, either really love you, or B, or just good people who just doing business with you, would just set it up to where it's a nice, smooth ride. But this person is, um, chaos, you know, disorder. There's no order on this person, right? There's no order around that narcissist, especially a mother, right? A mother or a father, whatever. There's 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 no respect. There's no where there's no respect, there's really no relationship. And so they're mad at you because they ruined the relationship. But they trying to blame you and gaslight you because they think if I make them feel guilty for the relationship not being good, then I can save the relationship. But they already know that in all reality, if they want to be real with life, they already kind of broke in the relationship because there's never going to be respect until you make them at this point, until you force them to see that, you know, you're going to have to force them to see you in a place that's just different than what it is that right now. They're going to have to know that they can't just call you. They're going to have to know that they just can't take photos of you. They're going to have to know that they can't text you. They're going to have to know that they can't put their hands on your relationships. They're going to know that witchcraft ain't working. They're going to have to know that everything is geared towards them suiciding yourself if they if they uh, try to, you know, mess with what you got going on. Because at this point, they need to see utter respect. They need to see utter respect. They don't even respect their own relationships with the people they choose. So they definitely don't respect the people that they didn't choose. They don't respect. So, again, as a 20, you know, mid-20s young man, I feel no respect to be around this person. I feel that there's no purpose. There's no reason. There's nothing there. And because there's nothing there, the universe is utterly showing me no remorse. And instead of me, you know, opening up cans of worms for myself, the universe is kind of springing somebody around me like a wild hyena in a forest hunting uh, impala. And it's just, it's just every chance, foaming at the mouth. Like I told you earlier, you go in the house to charge your phone and and it's just like you're, they can't just attack you for no reason. Sometimes they try to do it like that. They, they'll say, um, they'll find something little, but it's something like, man, they'll use the phone, they'll be on the phone. Oh, I don't know, but people in this house, they don't eat my food no more. I keep telling you that. It's like, why are you, why is your brain so stupid and fucked up? Excuse my French. That as soon as I come in the house, your brain goes zoom and just focuses directly on the target, like um, like the um the movie the pre the predator and the alien. It's literally like that. Like 
they shit zeroed in, their mind zeroes in and it's no respect. Zero, like it's like in that little glass thing, I think that was a Terminator though, but in that little thing they look through, the Predator, it's like with all the calculations, like the number says respect on zero, hunting on a hundred, you know what I'm saying? It really, that's all it really is. There's nothing else there. That's why when you try to have any type of logical conversation, they're not hearing it. Because it's just, they're hunting you at that point. They're not even paying attention to anything. This is why I'm not even in their house right now, but they're sending me a text. Why? We just got done arguing and you just like, basically just closed the door on me. And told me, um, you was done and you done for the day and you know I'm not you realize that I'm not gonna listen and things don't because they're trying to what they're trying to do right now is trying to get me to go back to school. I'm not even gonna lie, chosen ones, but they don't realize how old I am. And that as a man I don't need to take that type of advice. But they do realize it. That's the part that makes them weak in my eyes because they do realize it but they're still going to try to attempt it and then like i tell you it's as if they're hiding their 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 motive so why do you want me to go back to school because i don't need to well you live in my house it's easy for you to say that you know what i'm saying it's just like i don't know if we're dealing with mothers nowadays or we're dealing with robots i know i we you know we call them bots any narcissistic person we call them a bot Cause they don't make life, they don't make real life sense. Like, like they make sense systematically to the system on what you should be doing in this system, but they don't make like, they don't like got no compassion and no like reasoning skills. And like, they don't got no like empathy. Like they don't got nothing that makes them like easy to learn from at all. Nothing that makes them easy to learn from. So they get aggravated at how much you ignore them, but they don't realize that they're yelling and they're doing too much versus just telling you the messages in a way where you can, they're edible, right? They want to do everything, do abuse. Because I, remember, all their life, they never had no power. Nobody respects them. Nobody gives them any power. So they really haven't, um, they think that through you, they're going to live out a, a fantasy or an illusion. You know, this is my one time to be the boss and I never got to be a boss and every work I job I went to, they shitted on me. They treated me like the lower paid, you know. So they walk around with that type of heart and you just like, bro, like, leave me alone. Like, but they're like, oh, well, this person wants me to leave them alone. That's power, you know, and I'm going to use that to annoy them or to pull them into my web because at the end of the day, they have no power in this house. And, that, and then I'm gonna keep secret from them that if you don't get your own house, then you'll never ever have as much power as me. You know, we just was talking in the house and going back and forth and they just said this. Oh, well then you need your own house because you know, if you got a problem with being told what to do, then you need your own house. And, well, okay. And then I'll say something like, I agree with that, right? If I agree and you agree, we have finally came to an agreement. What they will do is keep talking until they find a point again that doesn't no longer fall under agreement with you. Because again, remember, their house, their rules, so they're not shutting up. They're going to keep pushing past the point of success until we get to another argument. This is what a lot of women do, though. I ain't going to hold y'all. A lot of good women out here don't think I'm bashing y'all, but the ones who are like this, they, they, they gold diggers, a lot of them. The ones who, they can't accept life. They can't accept like, okay, well, you know, I love women that's humble. And the narcissist is nothing like that. They're extremely egotistical. They think that they deserve to be treated like a princess and all this other stuff. And it's not the fact that you don't deserve it. It's the fact that you're prioritizing that over you and your son having just a regular standard relationship. Like, I don't got to treat you like a princess for us to have a good relationship. You don't got to treat me like a king for us to have a good relationship. But they, in their wicked, warped, 
brain, they really feel like I have to have this person in submission. As a man, I don't care if it's a man or not, he gotta be in submission. And because they think like that and they, they, they won't rest until they see life in the way they wanna see it, they're just gonna have to die trying because I'm not giving them that. I'm not giving them something that doesn't fit. Like, I'll put it like this. My sister moved out. They argued all the way up until she got out. When my sister is on her own finally with her kids and out on her own, she does not no longer argue as nearly as much, but they still disagree. So again, now my sister will be on the phone talking to my mom and my mom will gaslight and try to scapegoat me in front of my sister and my sister will turn around and agree with my mom. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. It wasn't crazy when you was doing it. But remember, it's all a matrix. It's all set up for you to be looking like a, a clown. Especially if you're a guy because it's like, well, women just want to feel better than men a lot of the time. Because when you go to these jobs and you got a man that's a boss, you know that you feel that you date. One thing about women, a lot of them understand what no power feels like to have no power. A lot of us guys don't really know what that feel like all the time. So a woman who experienced what no power feel like will bully or try to edge out on a guy who lacks experience because they know that they can have one foot up on a guy who ain't really worried about having one foot up on them. But once that guy realizes that, okay, I'm getting browbeat, yelled at, and treated like shit by these women who really ain't even really necessarily better than you. They just competing like shit. Then when you get on your, like I said, when you try to better your life, they'll try to attack whatever it is around you that's been helping you be on that level. It's crazy how it works. It's crazy how it works. And it'll really put you in your feelings if you allow it to, because it almost feels like an insult. You know, it feels like an insult because they're like, that's basically them telling you, you don't deserve what you got. Who wants to be with a woman who's competing with them? But then you'll say something like that and women, are, women are, uh, especially narcissistic women, they'll, they'll see that as, oh no, I don't want men to have that much power. You know, so I try to stay away from people like that. But remember, it's like Satan had to, even though I don't choose women like that, Satan had to make it to where you still got one big snake in your life that's going to do all the handiwork that, you know, other people can't do. Because we know if, we, if you out in public, you're not going to date a woman who's yelling at you. But there is guys out here who will date women who are yelling at them. Now, them guys may not be living in a mom crib because they moved out into something that's there's no return on that investment. You're stuck out the, the out of the crib with women who, but remember, it all boils down to independence. How bad do you want independence? Most women want independence more than most guys. That's why most women be bullying a lot of these guys. And it's, it, to me, it, it's really getting on my nerves. It's a pet peeve at this point, I ain't gonna lie. So, Remember, that's all this channel really about is adulting and self-esteem and all this stuff that the narc gonna try to tear out of you. You know what I'm saying? The world is gonna try to tear it out of you. The narc plus the world is gonna try to do that. Sometimes you're at the gas station, you pumping gas, there's a random guy just looking at you funny. Then, then you know, it's just some spirits on certain people. You know what I'm saying? I didn't mean for this video to go this long, but I'm about to end it right now while I still got the chance. But chosen ones, just remember, man, like, till you get your own crib, because I even feel like, I mean, a lot of young guys don't know what it feel like to have their own crib. I know I don't. I have roommates before, but but just remember, even when you get a job and you got your own crib or you get start getting paid off YouTube or you start getting paid from wherever you get paid from, don't think that these, it's a thin line between the narc really allowing you to finally just be who you're meant to be 
and them actually feeling like they still have a way into your life. Um, I will go ahead as far as to say that even when I moved out, the narcs still probably felt like they still had power over me somehow because the way I moved out, right? It's, it's all about the way you do stuff in life. It's not about what you do. It's the manner you did it in. And that's what a lot of spirituality got to do with anyway. Like if you do like a, a prayer or if you do certain things or, you know, it's, everything is about the ritual or the way you did what you did or, you know, because it's got to do with the intentions, the energy and the thought and the, and the whole thing. Like, so if you want to get out of a place, but you're scared out of the place or you run out of the place, it's not the same as you making a conscious decision to, you know, do the thing for the right intentions. And this world is really intention based. So it's scary because a lot of people did the right thing the wrong way. So it's a lot of wiggle room for gaslighting and people who older than you to tell you what to do and what. This is what I made the video about the other day that had to do with um, God's timing and not to listen. Like if I tell you, bro, don't do YouTube. It's the wrong time to get into this. I could be saying that it could be wrong for me and it could be totally right for you. Like, and that's what makes gaslighting so illegal in my mind. Cause it's like, I can literally say anything anytime. Cause I got a mouth. And Satan is going to allow me to open my mouth and say anything. As long as there's somebody who can be fooled, I'm going to try to fool, right? And that's what it is. It's gaslighting. So it's like, you not listening to them, it does something for you. But they will stay quiet because they're smart enough to go quiet when you do something positive, because if they bring any light to what you did, they know that you will actually stand on it. But if they keep it a, a secret, like, oh, you just, say you do something good, you got, a, you got a new girlfriend or something. To them, that's good for you, but that's not good for me. So, I mean, I'm not getting paid because you are with a new girl. Even though if you get out on your own with this girl and do something, that could ultimately lead to you giving me some money, but they don't want you to give them nothing. They want to be able to take stuff. We're going to talk about that in another video. Like this video, comment down below. Let me know what you think, man. We really going to get into that topic about they don't want you to give anything. They want to be able to take like a kid in a candy store. That's how they immature. And they're living out their fantasy. They're trying to live out a uh, and you know, I don't gotta get rich as long as I live near this person type of reality. So, so like this video, comment down below, let me know. And it's called financial abuse. That's called financial abuse. So like this video, let me know, man. I'll see you in the next video, man.